Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Jackson Vane. And I'm Johnny Kolosinski. This is Hi, Everybody, a Bad Medicine podcast. In this podcast, we discuss what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. This is a series of clips on our episode about Saw 2, where we're joined by guests Dr. Greg Winter and Dr. Courtney Nicholas. Take a listen. This was a guy with a death mask on him, and they said that he would see his answer somewhere. And then you see the x-ray of a key in his eye socket. For those of you who don't know me, I've got one eye and a prosthetic. Eye trauma is a big old nope for me. <laughs> so you were able to escape Jake yeah, Saul's. Yeah, you got the key out of your head, so. <laughs> I, The thing that kind of was a little crazy was they showed the x-ray of the key floating on top of the eye socket. Like, it didn't look like it was pointing inwards or anything like that. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about this more and more, and if the key is where they showed it, it's basically just sitting in his eye socket, which you don't have to do anything to get, you just can pull it out. It's already been, the eye is already destroyed when you put the key in there, yeah. so you just, just take it out. Just fish it out a little bit, <laughs> and that's it. I mean, or... It was going to be on the skin, because the way the x-ray looked like, it was sitting outside of yeah, the socket. Yeah. It, was... it did, but you couldn't see it on his face. No, no. You, saw the you just orbit, saw gruesome... And you saw the ball of his eye, yeah. but you didn't see the key. I, th- I think his problem was not knowing anatomy and knowing how easy it would probably be to get that key out. He just had an idea of where the key is. Yeah. He's like, well, I got to go through my eye. I don't think he... Like, either it's right there and you can get it, or it's kind of in the skin and you don't want to cut through your eye to do that. So if Jigsaw is going to take out one person on this podcast, it's going to be me. Damn but it's it. going to be really easy, though, because he just has to, like, lift up your prosthetic yeah. and just Boink. slide it in, and then you're set right there. So how would you guys, this is going to be another, please delete this so we can be doctors moment. <laughs> um, how would you guys hide a key in someone's eye socket or behind someone's eye? Use a smaller key. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna hide it, you're gonna have to use a small. Oh, key. but that wouldn't cause the damage that he was I, looking for. I mean, either that or hide it under the bone part, you know, and then make him dig for it. But the other thing is, when he was put his the knife or whatever it was into his eyeball, it was really bloody, and the eye itself isn't that bloody. At least at the it's, point where he the eye, the eye has different stuff in it. It's, <laughs> it's there's goop, goop in the it's eye. Goop. So we go back to like the main story because that was just like the appetizer, yeah. the amuse bouche, you might say, for this whole entire movie. <laughs> I have one question about the amuse bouche. Yep. So Jigsaw, who's the spoilers, the bad guy, uh, uh-huh. he's the okay guy. Yeah. He's basically trying to a- answer the questions of why man great till he got to be great. He cuts out a <laughs> jigsaw puzzle <laughs> piece out of all of his victims. Yeah. Is that something? Could he get that specific of a sample? Yeah, I mean, yes. if, if you use something sharp enough, you can definitely do it. And when you do biopsies of moles on people, you're usually making some nice, clean incisions and then taking that chunk of skin out. So if you want to be fancy one day and do a really nice skin biopsy, you can always make a jigsaw in there and take the skin out. And then talk to your local medical board about why you did that. Because <laughs> I thought it would look cool. Um, yeah, because I'm kind of thinking now I want to carve my initials in, but it's probably something I could only do on myself. Yeah, someone got yeah. arrested for doing that. <laughs> yeah. That, a doctor got arrested for doing that Plastic inside surgeon, of someone's right? body. Really? No. Was doing it on their, or, on their liver. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like, oh, yeah. Like yeah. actually cauterizing it, too, yeah. and not just, you know, cutting, but burning it in. Like, that's the thing, like... Shut he only got caught because up. somebody had another surgery, and they're and like, they "What is this? Why, why are initials, why are there yeah. initials in somebody?" He was basically doing graffiti in someone's abdomen. Like Doctor God was here. Kilroy was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg, I want to talk a little bit about your specialty, which is palliative care and of life care. How often is, as you're working with your patients, is building a torture room to <laughs> uh, uh, to torture those who have wronged you and your underlings to be fair he's not torturing them because they wronged him he's torturing them so that they can appreciate living in the future and, and that is and what appreciate he life he does want them to succeed he wants them true. to succeed so that they they can better enjoy i life. think there's a part of him that wants them to fail i mean this guy's pretty vindictive and i think they go into it and saw one more about his diagnosis and how that led him to do this because he wanted people to appreciate life although saw one is a better movie but I know it's not a psychiatry podcast, but psychiatry is part of medicine. It yep. should count. And it does count. So it, just, does count. it does count. Um, but he's talking to Donnie Dubs and says, 
I've never murdered anyone in my life. What he's doing is murder. Like, <laughs> there's no... The, there's, mach- the machine's murdered. They all had a chance to live. I mean, that's... I'm playing Jigsaw's advocate here. That's a philosophy question yeah. about if you build a machine to murder people and the ma- and the machine murders people, are you the murderer? Like, yeah. The amount of time what is murder has come up on this podcast <laughs> makes me a little uncomfortable, especially knowing that Google indexes everything. There's this part in the movie where he's um, pontificating a little bit and talking about, you know, what it means to appreciate life and how people are broken. Yeah, he says a couple things in there. He says, the knowledge of your own death changes everything completely. And he's talking about knowing the exact day and time he's going to die and how when he was in the hospital, someone came in and told him, that's a thing that does happen in real life. Uh, I have had to do those conversations with people. I I have never given someone an exact day or time, but that is something that often gets told to people. They get told they have six months to live or a week to live or something like that. Um, in my line of work, we try to be real ca- careful with that language. We, we are very general. None of that stuff is up to us. Nobody knows how long somebody's really going to gonna live. Um, but that is often how patients hear that and and i can totally see from his perspective that's like a big life-changing moment it puts your whole life in perspective mm-hmm. kind of changes how you're going to to do things moving forward i do hospice care so i'm doing end of life care for people all the time and they often i mean they talk about that moment and they also talk about how it makes them appreciate life more so that's a thing that i totally was like oh that was i mean that's kind of like real life he's a little, he's a little melodramatic about it but yeah i mean if anytime if you've had some scary experience Usually you appreciate life a little bit better for at least a little while before things kind of go back to normal. I think that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I'll Everything. get off my soapbox. And there, and therein lies the creation of the next Jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? You know, it's interesting to hear you talk about that too because when you're telling people, trying to gauge how long their life is but not giving definitive periods of time, it changes how they see their life and how they focus on what they're going to do. And in my line of work, I have You're a neonatologist. I'm a neonatologist, so I take care of babies in the ICU, some of whom are very sick, and unfortunately some of whom don't survive. We have to do something similar to that, but the receptive side of that is not how am I going to change my life or how am I going to make the most of what time I have left, but how am I going to prepare for losing my child? And I... I've learned very quickly that we know nothing about timing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've had, you know, patients who I thought for sure were not going to survive. And, you know, two months later, they're going home and their mothers are writing me notes saying, thank you for letting my son prove medicine wrong. And so I've just given up trying to, yeah. Yeah. to I, pigeonhole that. For me on the ER side, I just go, someone else will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Human centipede. Was 100% medically accurate. In comparison. In comparison, how many percent medically accurate is Saw 2? For an example, since this is the first time, I would call the office episode, The Injury, 42,000% medically accurate. I was going to say, this is going to be more than 100%. Yeah. So how many percent medically accurate is so in, Saw 2? In my head. Okay, Human so. Centipede was, I think I said, like, 28% accurate. I think that the marketing material said 100% medically accurate. So, I I think this is... Pr- they're not trying to do medical stuff, so anything in there is plausible. Do I think there should have been more blood in one of the cases? Yeah, but... The burn victim could have been more burnt. Yeah, but also, who knows, maybe... Is the chemo a little bit off? Yeah. And, you know, the energy for the... I'd say it's probably two or three times more accurate than you I would say. <laughs> yeah, I would say... So I, go relative. I'd say I 200 to 300% more uh, medically accurate human centipedes. I, I'm, I think it's significantly more than that. You think? <laughs> like, I think maybe 700% more accurate. This is like, this movie, there's nothing crazy about it. 700% medically accurate, 200 to 300% medically accurate. Yeah. I'm going to go 5. 500% medically accurate. I'm you're, cynical. You're wrong. It's 700. There's a, it's, wrong. <laughs> it's very clear. <laughs> There's a little bit crazy in there. A little but bit. I, as opposed, when it, everything is relative and comparing it to human centipede, yes. I think the things that make it crazy are more physics-based as opposed to medicine-based. Yeah. I would say the chemo thing was kind of... 
me. There's no nobody says anything. Sure. That's that's in your head. That is in my head. <laughs> you think that's chemo? It might not be chemo. The burning the chemo. burning thing didn't. That burning and, thing and, is the most egregious and, one. And, and the sarin gas, uh, maybe, the presumed sarin gas. That part wasn't very accurate either. All right, probably five hundred percent. 